So welcome to another war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a new game from Worthington Games called Napoleon Returns, 1815. 1815, as you may well imagine, this is a Waterloo game. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, this is more about the whole campaign that culminated in Waterloo. Yeah. Um, this is not just a Waterloo game. There's plenty of those. There's, frankly, there's probably plenty of these 1815 campaign games. Yeah. Uh, but this is a light two-player war game uh, where you have a French player and you have uh, an Allied Armies player and a Prussian Armies player. You can play it three-player, where you divvy mm -hmm. up the Prussians and the Allied. You just have half as much stuff to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's the reality of it. Yeah. Uh, but you, it's I don't know. I'm going to play this two-player, right? Because that basically the Allied army and the Prussian army combine together are the same size as the French army. Yep. So it's just, and they move on the same turn. The sa you know, it's yeah, like it, they can move together. They can attack together. It doesn't make sense if they were separated and maybe went on their own activation. The Prussians did, separate from the Allies. Maybe it would be better at three-player, yeah, but... If you were in a pinch, like if you were a dad with two boys and you wanted to sure, play together... to teach sure. them. Yeah. Nice, easy way to do it, but yeah. it's, you know, this is a fine two-player game. I, yes. Yep. If I've got three Works players, very well. there's other games that you could play. Right. But, uh, effectively, you have like uh, seven or eight uh, army units, mm -hmm. which are core-sized, and they're these really nice... Uh, wooden blocks. blocks, which have a printed mm -hmm. name and a little symbol on them. Which we talked about it. It's it's always it's fun to play with those, oh, yeah. right? It. We were kind of mentioning that that's what we all see on maps and historical maps. Yes. And it, to me, it translates very well into the board game, and it's very cool that they did that. They could have done any number of different things. But basically, but, you'll have anywhere from seven or eight of those. Yep. And it's a small enough point-to-point -point map, mm -hmm. and you're moving your armies around to try as the French to gain two objective points. Yes. And the British are there just trying to kill French and stop them from achieving yeah. their objectives. The objectives, uh, there's five objective cards, and the French draw two randomly at the beginning of the game, and those are secret. So mm -hmm. I, as the Allied player, have no idea what they're trying to go for. Obviously, there's, a, there's an array that I know what they could be. Yep. And it's stuff on my end of the map. The important places like Ghent, Antwerp, uh, Liège and Brussels, mm -hmm. and, then, and then killing three core. Yes, but of yeah, there's a card the doing side. lots of wounds as yeah. well. So they got two objectives. If they can get those at the end of a turn, the French will win. If not, the game is going to go 15 turns, and it's going to be uh, an Allied victory if the French can't achieve their objectives. Yep. Yep. The box says victory within two hours. Mm -hmm. I would 100% agree with that. Yep. Uh, if the French win, it'll be much shorter than that. Yes. <laughs> because you won't go the whole time the game could yeah, go. Yeah. It well, I think either side it could go very badly yeah. and could end much quick, more quickly. Yeah, I think. I, if this goes the whole two hours, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, I would be shocked. Honestly. Yeah. And I guess... You would have very it's... timid players who are not attacking and who are just... there Because there is some ability to maneuver... Yes. A little bit. Yes. But you would not... You know, to me, this game is about attacking. You're going to move, you're going to get in position, you're going to attack. Yes. You're yeah. trying to outnumber the other person, you're trying to get more combat cards and Set take advantage of Set up some intelligent that. attacks. Yes. And then do them. Yeah, don't just attack every every chance you get no. willy-nilly. That's yeah. stupid. But that's... But, yeah, it's not a complicated game by any stretch no. of the imagination. Rule looks like... Eight pages. Eight pages. Yeah. Uh... And with Worthington, they give you two copies. So Which is can, always great. So you it's can always both have great. one. So if yep. you need to read something while well, Sam reads something, we can do that. We can yep. it separately. I, I appreciate that. And I thought the player aid was excellent. Yes. I, it's all in a condensed version. It's all here. Yeah. You know, so you can, re you can read the rule book and then you can remember. I thought it was excellent. The very important part is this combat card table where you're going to have to remember... Oh, when he plays this card, I gotta play this type of card to yes. counter it. That's really the, the the part that took some getting used to. Yes, yes. But it came pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, the the way the game works is, is the French player has four movement points, and they roll a die and get a certain number more on top up, of that. Up to seven movement points. And that's literally 
if you get seven movement points, you can move all seven yeah. of your units on the board. It's real. Because Napoleon always moves for free. Yes. Leaders always move for free. Yes. Uh, and mm-hmm. then and then they move, and then we resolve any combats that may occur, mm-hmm. and then it goes to the allied player. They roll for their uh, allied forces and their Prussian forces separately, mm-hmm. but it's a, it's a smaller amount because there's fewer of them. And then they do all their moves, and then do all their combats. And that's a turn. Uh, usually the turns are very quick, especially yep. if there's no combats going on. Mm-hmm. So in the early game where you're kind of moving around, trying to outflank each other, there's not as many combats. If any, those turns go very quickly as you're just yeah. like, I can move these guys here, move these guys here, done. Mm-hmm. Um, once you get into combat, combat is done in a, I don't know if I'd say unique, but in a very different way to mm-hmm. something that we're used to. And it's done through card play. Yeah. Uh, in essence, to... in essence, it's it's kind of a war off, yes. without numbers. It's yes. it's a type of card. So I'm gonna I don't I'm gonna coin a phrase here. Yeah, this is not a bucket of dice game. It's a bucket <laughs> of cards. There game. you go. Yep. <laughs> Basically, uh, you have these displays, and on here, this is uh, the Prussians, and it has each of the four different units that the Prussians have on the board, and they'll have a, a, a combat value. That's the number of cards that you'll receive if that unit's in the combat. Mm-hmm. So if you get into like a big battle like Waterloo and you've got six or seven guys in there, you're going to have a hand of 15 up to 20-odd you know, yeah. cards. Yep. And you're using those cards, and the, there's like six types of cards. If I'm the attacker, I play one card. You have X amount of cards. Yep. You're trying to match that or mm-hmm. counter that. And then we do another round. And you keep going... Until I play a card that you can't match, or vice versa. Or that you don't wish to match. Yes, yes. Because you either don't believe you can yeah. win any further because of your cards, or you think, oh my gosh, if it goes any further, if it's, yeah, I'm going to get decimated or if, if I take very all those losses. Yeah. yeah. And so you basically, but that's how the, the game is, right? I play an infantry attack, you play an infantry attack, we do another round. Yeah. Uh, I play a grand battery, you play a grand battery, play another round. Or I play, a combined arms. Yeah. There's usually two that counter every type. And then, like, I might play a cavalry charge, you don't have anything to counter that, yeah. I win the combat. It's real simple. Yeah. And then the number of rounds of combat that we played, which you can tell by how many cards you've played, yeah. that's how many losses you inflict on, on the loser of the mm-hmm. combat. So if you have a huge amount of cards, and it's a really decisive battle... Like... Th- like 13 rounds? <laughs> yep. You're going to take 13 <laughs> losses, and the attacker takes half of that rounded down. Yeah. So I'm still going to take six losses in that instance. So if you get into the really prolonged pitched battles, it can be very, very costly. It, it can be game over at that point. Yes, yes. Basically. But it, I, I will say this. The very interesting, there's a, there's a tipping point, right? There's a point where you've invested so heavily, yes, you can't turn back, or it's just it's just devastating. Yeah, it's folly, and that's yeah, and that's something that I really liked about this game is that it very explicitly states in the rules: running away is a good thing. Basically, yeah, right. Like, if, don't feel bad about not playing a card and just running away. Yeah, if you get attacked by a superior force, yeah, or if your hand of cards is really bad, if you have a whole handful of Infantry assaults, and, and they and play that's that, it. and they play that grand battery on the first card. You're yep. like, not worth it. Yep. You could opt to not play anything, and I would say if you're going to retreat, you do better it do it then. Do yep. it the first turn, at most the second. Yeah. Don't don't don't. The longer you wait to retreat, the worse it is for you because yep. every time you retreat, every one of your units takes one loss. Yep. Plus, you'll have to take losses for losing the combat. So if you retreat in the first round, you take one loss from losing that first round of combat. Yeah. And then one loss, or one cohesion loss. Yeah, so, so let's make, make it clear. It's not necessarily a, a loss in terms of a number of units or a, a wing or a, a division yeah, or what have you. It's it's a cohesion number. You have this track, and you, yeah. it just goes down. Once you get off the end of the track, your, your core is removed from the game, and it's yeah. totally dead. That they basically lost control. They don't have morale anymore. They they may be out of ammo. They may be wounded enough. That they're just not an effective yeah. fighting force. So it, it's not necessarily losses. It's a cohesion Yeah, it's called a cohesion. Concept. But yeah, it's... You, you, 
you don't ever get cohesion back. No, so, no, you don't. So, so if you're gonna retreat, and you take a, I'd rather take a little bit of cohesion than a lot of bit of cohesion from losing. And still have to retreat. Yeah. So I, that that. But what I like about this game is that it encourages you to do that. You know, yeah. you don't you don't fight a battle you don't you think you win. can win, yeah. and you shouldn't. And if you do, you will lose this game very quickly. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just appreciate a game, especially one that's introductory like this, that encourages that kind of thinking, where you get something yeah. more than just, oh, I'm going to move and shoot. But yep. It encourages you to think about other extra bits of how you conduct a military operations. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, and, and we haven't talked about it yet, but there's a very interesting concept called your, your tactical, what is it called? I'm sorry, your tactical rating. Yes. Or a, and, and it's kind of an assumed counterattack that you you have taken the blow of the enemy, you've parried that blow, yes. And now if you roll a high enough or low enough number, yeah, under your tactical rating, you've gained the advantage, and you now press yeah, you're, the attack. You're counterattacking, taking the initiative. So where I was the attacker, I was yep. playing the card, forcing you to react. You were to choosing that. the card that I then had to react to. After every round, you have the option to destroy yep. or die. Usually it's a two or less. It's very hard to do. And if you get it, you then become the the, mm -hmm. the active player. You're then attacking me, and I'm reacting. And then after that, I might roll. And so the some of the combats have real back and forth in them. Oh, yeah. And I, again, I like that because it keeps it tense. Yep. The die rolls are like, Ugh, Am I, got, I, yep. got, I need to get the initiative back because yep. I've got a terrible hand apart from one card. So it was interesting in our, in our grand final battle at Brussels. You know, I was the French, you were the, you were the Allies and the Prussians. You know, I, I, I looked at my cards and I actually had a card the first time we were tied, right? Then I chased you off and you came back at me and because you attacked across, across the river... I think I had a few more cards and you had taken some cohesion losses. Yeah. But I had a bunch more cards than you. And when I looked at my first hand and I saw, ooh, I've got five grand battle card or grand battery cards. Yes. And those are hard to counter. They can only be countered by a grand battery card or a combined, or a combined arms. arms. Yeah. And it's not that they're hard. There's actually the same amount of cards. But if you've got a lot in your hand, it's, you can just, it's less likely that I will have a yep. lot in my hand. So if I, I had four or five in my hand, and it's like, he's not going to have, because there's like 60 cards, he might have two or three, and I'm like, I'm going to... But even though I had that advantage, every time that a card was decided, you had the opportunity to roll that tactical rating. Yeah, and then if it switches to... Uh, and if then I get the initiative, yeah. that big advantage of those cards Are now gone. is a hindrance. Yep. Because I won't be playing no nope. battery cards. Yep. And you're like, oh no, I've yeah. got at least... I, I, so that die, that tense <laughs> on the... I was like, oh, please don't roll, don't roll a three. I think your your tactical rating was a... It was a three with... Uh, I think with Wellington. Wellington. Wellington's a two. I had Blucher, who's a three. Okay. And I was like, please roll it. And you kept I rolling kept fours and four fives. And fives. I'm like, yes! The worst. So I, I love that aspect of the combat. There is some planning. There's some, yeah. you know, you really want to get that initiative so that you decide what card is being played. Yeah. Because then you're in control. And it's it's a very neat concept. I think it works very well. It can make for a fairly long battle and a fairly tense battle. Yes, it can. And like we discussed... It doesn't drag the game down, though, because you'll only ever do one of those again. Because you can't recover from that. Yeah, if you lose a big, long, protracted 13 or 14 card it battle... It's bad. You're, you're basically done at that point. Yeah. Your units will be so wounded, they and you'll have to, to retreat, where they'll take more of those cohesion hits. You're then... if I mean, you're fighting ineffective at that point. Yeah, yeah. Because... Halfway down your uh, cohesion points, you start getting fewer cards. Yeah. So if I then re-engage, I'm going to have fewer cards. cards at my yeah. disposal. Uh, things get real ugly yeah. after you fight those big battle in in the game. And which con is, yeah. But conversely, I, th I think early on we had a big battle where I had I had assembled my French and I came up to you and I think I had like a lot of cards and you had like. I had I think I had like six or seven. Yeah. But I had nothing. You you beat me on the very first card. So you you were like oh crap. So that was good for you. Yeah. You it just took a loss. Ended up working out. Yeah. In that instance. You did have to retreat, so you took another loss on each. But it was better than going a protracted thing and then losing. Yeah. I I just really thought that combat system worked very well. It it's not as quick and decisive as a roll on a CRT. 
No. You know, where this could very easily have been that. You know, they could have created this game along those lines, but they decided to use these combat cards. I, I think it's well done. And the cards are beautiful. They got they really are. nice uh, paintings on them, both back and front. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's And it helps to keep the game light yep. and refreshing. Yeah. It's not some... Because once you start getting into odds-based combat ratios and CRTs, that scares a lot of people off. It does. Who aren't war gamers. This is something you can sit down with someone, uh, you know, any family, or like on a holiday when people can get together again, and you know you could play this. Oh, it's a little card, it's a little card yeah. game. It's, it's a card game. game. It's not. Dad, I promise. It's, it's really know? not massively yeah. involved in that instance. No. And you're playing a little bit of matchy matchy cards. And it's fun. I mean, it's yeah. simple, fun, fairly quick playing, and I think it's well done. So speaking of the the, the combat card system again. Think of games like Wild Blue Yonder, yes, or Down in Flames. Um, am I, am I, Wild Blue Yonder is Down in Flames. It's just it's a new version system, of it. Yeah, yeah, but think of those games. It's yeah, very much like that. Where it's I'm playing a card, you're trying to counter it. Then you play a card, I'm trying to counter it. That that's exactly what you're doing here. It's just a little bit different. It's been modified a little bit. Well, but it's, that's the, it's the a little concept. simpler in the a card has only two counters, whereas yeah. those like. Some of the cards have like three or four. Yeah, right. There's, there's a bunch of different types. This one, it's you can be ch counted with a matching card or a combined arms card. Right. It's it's a little bit uh, slimmed down from that, but yeah, it's this very same concept where you have that hand of cards and mm -hmm. you're like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can counter that. Or, or I yep. know you keep playing those, which means I know you don't have any of those left anymore. Right. So I'm going to play one more, and I've got you. Yeah. So you can get into those moments, which are fun as well. Be like, yeah. <laughs> The other thing I think we, we need to talk about, the, the board, it is point-to-point. -point. Yes. Point-to-point -point typically sets it up so that there's only two or three major paths of egress to kind of get into battle. I felt like this, though, was fairly wide open. I felt like I could move this way and go that way, and we had enough distance that it created some... A little bit of question about, oh, where exactly are we going to go? Or how are we going to try to yeah. get there? or I, And I, I found the map to be very interesting with how the points are done. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you're on a path going north, and I'm like, got some flanking forces trying to get up over there as well. Sometimes you might have one extra point on your track that you got to yeah. go. I might have one more. And so you're like, catching people can, can be can quite be difficult one yep. way or the other. Uh, so you want to... <laughs> I don't know how you would like counter that kind of thing. Yeah. There, there are times where you're like, you've got to give up the chase on someone because right. you'll never catch them. Yeah. So go and do something else before you get overstretched and then your yeah. units are out on an island, can't do anything. Well, and there are ways to catch them, but it's costly. You Very can do costly, a force, yeah. was it called a force march? Well, I think so, yeah. That's what and we'll you call could, it. you know, an infantry unit usually can only move one space, but you could do a force march, which causes you to lose a cohesion point to get an extra movement. Cavalry can move two for the same one point without losing cohesion. Yes. So it's like there comes a point where you might say, you know what, I, I, I need to catch up. I might actually spend. We didn't see that in our game, but I could no, see where yeah, that it's... would <laughs> potentially happen. Yes. But it's hard to do that because that's... Man, that's costly. It's very costly. Yes. Yeah. There's, but, but that's what I like about this game. I think. Yeah. Is that it's a really simple game. It's really easy right. to learn. It's really easy to teach. But every so often, there's some, there's some real bits of nuance to this where you're like, yeah. Oh yeah. This is this is neat. That's yeah. something to think about here. That's something to consider. Yeah. I but, think this is well put together. I think they did a good job of capturing yes. the elements of the battle, capturing the different feel, and then putting in these really cool cards that, you know, the other thing we didn't even talk about really is some of these cards have like a, if this card is used to end the combat, yeah. a cavalry charge, for example, you know, that, that hurts bad. So you're going to take one extra loss. Yeah, if you yeah, if you win with the cavalry charge, you inflict an extra loss on yeah. the loser. If you win with a skirmish card, you do one fewer. one fewer because, you know, you were skirmishing. You're, skirmishing. Yeah. you're just shooting just, across the field. So there's extra little bits of like, I want to do a cavalry charge on you, but I also want to save it for the end and yep. try to yep. win with that cavalry yep. charge. Right. But then you start counter cavalry charge, oh, yeah. and then you're like, oh no. And then the other cool card was the counterattack. The, yes. The counterattack made it so that I didn't have to make my tactical rating roll or less. Yes. 
to gain the advantage and now be the attacker. It was automatic. Yeah, if I attacked you with a counterattack card, and then you play the counterattack card, you automatically get that Maybe, initiative, yep. basically. So, so as the attacker, you're really trying not to play those. Yeah. <laughs> but then if you've got them at the end, you're like, oh no. I got to. <laughs> this is going to yep. get out of hand real quick, because it's definitely going to go over to him. So I thought there was enough neat uh, little nuances and elements that they put into those cards so it wasn't just a simple card, you yeah. know, fight going back and yes. forth. Yes. What I'll do is I will show you the board uh, and the components, which I really liked. Yeah, um, beautiful game. And then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the map, and you can see it kind of looks, I don't know, it's got, it's, it's got a decent, at least I think, it, it's got a nice aesthetic to it. it, it the background is very much... The map is a background to this on which you're playing. Uh, but the game is played with, basically, these are all the units in the game. There's not a whole lot. Blue ones are French, red ones are allied forces, and these kind of black-gray ones are the Prussians. And you can see on the backs of these French ones, they, they have the name of the core, or one of them's Napoleon, one of these ones here. This one's Napoleon right here. Uh, so there's an element of hidden block movement to this. Um, you can see the Prussians and the Allied ones, you can't see what they are, it's faces towards you. So at least, especially early on, you don't quite know where everyone is, especially if you don't use the historical setup and you used something else. But basically you're going to move forces, you're trying to get it to, um, into combats and defeat each other. The French are trying to take uh, objectives, and this one the, uh, their objectives were Ghent and Brussels, which they successfully did. But there's Ghent, Brussels, Antwerp, Liège. Those are the four location objectives. And there's also another objective that they can uh, get, which uh, corresponds to defeating three core units in combat. So if they can take one location and have killed and removed off the board three enemy core units, then they would win the game that way. Uh, if they don't do that by the end of 15 turns, they, they lose the game, the ally player wins. Um, there's auto-victory conditions as well for both sides, and they're the same. If, if either side loses four core units, they immediately lose the game. So this is, there's three, well, Napoleon doesn't count, so if these, if four guys die, the French lose immediately. Whereas, if they're trying to go for those other victory conditions where it's, you need to kill three guys and hold the area. You can kill three guys, you know, if, if we kill three uh, enemy units, we have to hold Ghent as well, but it has to be the end of the round, so if they have to hold this against any counterattacks, otherwise they wouldn't win, uh, and they'd have to kind of retake Ghent, for example. So simple in the terms of victory conditions. The, normally the French start right here, and they're kind of massed, and the, uh, the Allied and the Prussian forces kind of spread out kind of got to get together. Oh look, in Waterloo, let's bring everyone together whilst the French kind of march up. That's part of what that is. You can get guys down there decently enough uh, and then the Prussians kind of come in late, imagine that. Um, if, if you wanted to play historically, that's kind of what you're doing and you do that because Waterloo is kind of a key to Brussels and Antwerp uh, as, as well as mm, kind of in a roundabout way to get to Ghent. You can also go this way around to Ghent as well. But if you, you know, it odds are on that Antwerp or Brussels, one of those two is going to be one of their two objectives. So, you know, you it's more often than not you're going to get some kind of action happening around here, typically speaking. Uh, but basically, the French have four movement points. They roll a die, and they roll the five. So on a one through two, they would get one more. On a three through four, they'd get two more. On a five or six, they would get all seven moves. They can move all seven of their units. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight blocks, but one of them is Napoleon. I've lost him again. And Napoleon uh, moves for free. So does Wellington, so does Blucher. Basically, you move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy moves for free as long as he ends uh, with a, a, a core of his faction. So movement is really, really simple. Uh, there is a cavalry unit somewhere, and cavalry units can spend one movement point to move two spaces. 
He says Imperial Guard, no, Cavalry, here we go. So a Cavalry unit can go one, two, that costs only one movement point. They do all their moves. If there's any combats, e.g. we're in an area together, we resolve a combat. If not, it goes to the uh, British and the Allied player turn. So the Allied forces, the red ones, have two movement points, plus, so one, two, three, four, they get to this, five, six, they get to this. So right now we're going to move three units. So I've got first core, I've got reserve core, Wellington moves for free, so then I've got one move left. I'm going to move my cavalry, cavalry move two, one, two. So I'm going to try and reinforce that. Real simple, that's moves. And then uh, same thing with the Prussians. They rolled a three as well, so they've got three moves. Let's go one, two, and let's move. Uh, Let's move these guys in, and Belushia moves for free. So now we're going to have a big fat fight in Brussels if the French come at us. That's movement. It's really, really simple. Uh, once you get into combat, so let's say these guys are fighting. We have uh, French cavalry, and we have uh, Prussian third corps fighting in, uh, in Hannet. Let's say the French are the attackers. They move in, they're the ones doing the attacking. At that point you reveal who it is, and then you look at these uh, little cards. So on here, the cavalry have a standard combat cards. They're going to get three combat cards. If and only if uh, their cohesion is up here. If it's down here, they're only going to get two. So you're going to start with three combat cards for the cavalry. So combat cards are here. One, two, three. Uh, and the Prussians, that's Prussian third core. Prussian third core, they're at a nine over here. They're also going to get three cards. One, two, three. Uh, most of them, there's not a ton of variation, but British Cavalry are going to get four. British Second Corps is only going to get two. Uh, and then you get into some of the fun stuff, like the Imperial Guard start with five, because they're, they're the veterans. And they also have a much higher cohesion value, up at 11, basically more than most other people. Um, so, you get dealt that number of cards... And then the attacker, which is the French player, they're going to choose to play one of their cards. Now, this is all done secretly, obviously. So they're going to play a grand battery. So they're shooting the cannons. Now, as the British, or as the, uh, as the defender, I have to try to counter this card. So to do that, I have to play a card matching in name, which is grand battery, or... I have to play a card which uh, says Combined Arms. And this is all on this little chart on the play aid, which is very, very helpful for learning the game, but it's also very simple once you have it down. So I counted this card. The first round of combat is done. At this point, as the defender, I can roll my dice to try to counterattack. Counterattacking is basically seizing the initiative, at which point I would be the attacker, uh, and I would be trying to, I would be the one to place the first card to force you to react to it. So at this point, I'm going to roll a die and I consult my little tactical rating for third core, because that's who I am, I'm third core. So I have to roll a two or less. Roll a die, I didn't, so it made stays with the French, the French are the attacker. They're going to do a grand battery, because I've only got three cards, the likelihood of me having multiple grand batteries, not that high. And it turns out, I don't. Uh, I can, you can only counter with a Grand Battery or, I believe, a Combined Arms. Yes, that's correct. So, unfortunately, I'm going to lose the battle at this point. So I just, I'm, I lost the battle. And what we do is we count up how many rounds of combat there were. One, two. That's how many losses I take as the loser. So, Third Corps takes two Cohesion hits. One, two. Then, I have to retreat, so I'm going to retreat this way, uh, and retreating causes one extra cohesion hit. And this is what we talked about earlier, if you don't think you're going to win, just concede during the first round, because at most you'll take one hit from this, and then one for retreating. Uh, it, the longer you wait to retreat, the more pointless and fruitless it's been. And then the winner of the combat takes half the rounds of combat rounded down. 
Oh, did I take two losses? Yes, one, two, and then one for yes. Okay, good. Uh, so the cavalry, there were two rounds of combat, they take half of that. So the cavalry, they're going to take one cohesion hit. Now, where that becomes important is if you have a massive battle like this. Uh, <laughs> if we're fighting with all these guys, and this is like the culmination of everything in the game, we've got like 20 cards apiece because you're having all of these tactical values added up, plus your leader's value as well, uh, all of these combat values. Basically what you end up with is the combat's going to go typically quite a good number of rounds, but at the same time, if you lose, uh, you know, if you think about it, if you've got four or five guys in the combat and you take ten hits, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one... That's 10 hits. It's not terrible, but then you've got to retreat, everyone's going to take one more hit. Not good. Uh, so, when you get into the big combats, um, or if you've got multiple guys, you can spread the hits out a little bit. If it's just a one-on-one -on -one combat and you lose and lose badly, for example, if you lose and they play the cavalry charge, a cavalry charge does plus one hit, if that's the final decisive card that wins the combat. So, you know, if, if you've done two rounds of combat and you lost on this, suddenly you're taking three hits and you have to retreat, which now you're taking four hits. I mean, it's just, things can escalate really quickly. So you have to be very careful about how you play your battles. And if you're going to retreat, retreat early. But basically, that's how the game's played. It's, it's this back and forth of card play. If you ever steal the initiative, if you can take it, by rolling it, usually most of the tactical ratings are two or one. So if you roll a one, you're usually good. Then I would then have the initiative. I'm playing the card, forcing you to counterattack, uh, which is it's always good to be on the offensive in this one. Typically, uh, then so you get this back and forth, even within a small hand of cards, where effectively you're playing war, like the little card game where you're matching numbers and things like that, or playing snap. It's 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 fun. It's enjoyable. It's lightweight, it keeps the game moving along at a good clip, it looks fantastic, uh, and it and it's, doesn't take itself too mega seriously, which I appreciate. But that's that's re really the core of the game, it's trying to keep your cohesion decent, so that when you do fight, you're getting max cards, and you're trying to play your cards in an intelligent way, where you can expend or force the opponent to use all of their cards of a certain type, so that you can then, you know, do the dagger with any remaining ones of that one that you have. I think the longest battle we had lasted 13 rounds, and it was, again, if you're playing a 13 round combat, the game's basically over at the end of it, because you're, the loser's going to take so many wounds, and then retreat, usually from an objective that the French need, or the French need to take that, and they're going to have to retreat, and they're never going to be able to get back and take that, or if you're defending, you're so weak that they're going to push you off it really easily. Usually that one big decisive battle, once you get to it, has a lot of tension to it, and it's, and it's good fun and enjoyable. But that's effectively the game, uh, and what we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Uh, I had a good time with this game, it was fun. Me too. And it's nice to have a game that plays quickly, mm -hmm. but doesn't feel like it's so light and themeless. Right. I feel like some games where you're like, this is a really quick war game, where you're like, it was a, it was a game, I guess, but it, it wasn't was necessarily very, I don't know, yeah. yeah. So they're like light for the sake of being light. This well, and you could have called it just war game, right? Because the theme yes, didn't really yeah. exist. Whereas I... You know, it, I, I, I don't know, I enjoyed playing with this. Mm -hmm. It's nice to play with. The cards are really nice. They look fantastic. Yeah. You know, you've got, even the, te the text on them gives you a little bit of like, oh, it's an infantry charge. Yeah. Oh, it's a cavalry charge. Yeah. yeah, great. But the the little wooden pieces are fantastic. Fantastic, yep. Having those on this board, you know, it looks and feels like you're... Period. It's sat around a table pushing little mm -hmm. war game blocks, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know, it's fun and it gives you that feeling of like, yes. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm Wellington moving my pieces on the board <laughs> yeah. in my command tent. Yep. And that's, I don't know, I think people like that. 
Yep. And that's how I would try to entice people to play this game. Yeah. You, you set it up and like, yeah, let's play this, because it looks so nice. Mm -hmm. If the game looks nice, non-war game is going to be enticed by it as Absolutely. Well, right? It's got to look nice to really get them sometimes. And, but... it, and it's not complicated. No. It, it plays quickly, so it's not going to scare people off in that. Yeah. Well, well. And, and I mentioned it earlier, but I, I'm going to be honest, that's a really good player aid. It's good, yeah. It is very good... A lot of times you're reading the rules out loud and I'm just not paying attention, but man, it's all right here. Yep. And that that's fantastic. And actually, I think Worthington, most of the games we've played of theirs, the rules are fairly simple and understandable, but the player aids are always very, Typically very good. Right. And and the back of the play aid has the game set up. Yeah. So you... you Historical once, setting. Once you or, played it once, you just play, yeah. play off the play aid. You, you'll never see the rules again. You can do a random setup, which I thought was kind of cool. It would throw some... A little yeah. bit of replayability into it because you could you could move Napoleon to the east and you know maybe you could even do that after you've drawn your objective cards but I don't know maybe not so yeah I'm not sure about that yeah I'm not sure either this. but yeah yeah it's fun how it is and I enjoyed it and I had absolutely a good time with it well if if you want a, a game that's going to play in probably seventy five to ninety minutes. I know it says two hours. Usually at most. No, yeah. it says victory within, within two, two hours. hours. So an hour and 59 minutes. Yeah. So, yeah, give or take. <laughs> but if you want a game like that that's on on Napoleonics and it has some feel and some theme and some interesting mechanics and interesting elements, this is this is really what you're looking for. It, it, it looks great on the table, plays great, is fun, and it's something I could throw down and play this again. I mean, it was that yeah. fun and enjoyable. And, and quick. Yeah, and quick. It didn't overstay its welcome. No. The the only complaint I had about it is, and it's about the map. The map is a little bit drab. We actually got out our map from Antietam, which is a Civil War game, so basically the same yes. style of fighting, not the same time period. That map was gorgeous because it had some color on it. and Yeah, this is, this is much more desaturated than right. that. This which, I don't care one way or the other about that aspect of it. Right. The colors are okay. I wish they'd have put little yeah. nice cities. And that that on is it. that is a fair criticism, I think. I don't like the polygon You've done checked boxes. Really so. nice wooden pieces and cards and all the little yeah. details on the map, apart from the towns, which are just like <laughs> It's like they're randomly drawn polygons. <laughs> With some stripes. You're like, okay, great. Maybe Mike and Grant did they sat down and they <laughs> drew a dozen different of those. And but I, I would argue that it was would have been very simple to pay the artist. To draw three or four different types of cities, a large, yeah. small, medium, and then just copy and paste them on the board. Yeah, so, that's the only negative that I would have. Yeah, I, I think game. I would also have loved to have seen maybe some event cards would have been kind of cool. Maybe you could get some cohesion back, but that kind of destroys the concept of the game. Yeah, well, it, then, it, yeah, I mean, you could do that. If yeah. you had like a little extra deck of cards that was like yeah. optional, oh, toss this in and you're Just like, to add some variety. Ooh. Yeah, maybe. But, you know, as it stands, this is the kind of game that I would pull out and mm -hmm. play with someone who wasn't a traditional war gamer. Agreed. And I think they would enjoy it. And I think they able, would love it. be able to learn it and play it, at least, very yeah. easily. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I plus it's Napoleonics, and I like yeah. Napoleonics. It was fun. Yes. And you will be happy to know that the French won. Well. History was not repeated. <laughs> Napoleon was, was victorious, and... You know, but it's very possible, right? It's yeah, it very, is. very possible. I'm just ashamed for my nationality. But it was all. fun. It was yes. I liked that it was possible for the French to win. Yeah, it's I, I do, and I like that the victory conditions change. Yep, because then you also there's an element of the game's 15 turns long, mm -hmm. so you have a little bit of time where you could. I don't know if you would do it a lot, but like just yeah. like faint and kind of counter maneuver. To you could kind do of a little put bit. You are. Yep. Oh, I'm going to send a guy over here or two mm -hmm. to distract you whilst I take my other forces over here. You might not know quite which ones I'm going for. Yeah. Eventually, it can become obvious. Yeah. And you just got to go and do it. But I don't know. There's an element of maneuver in this which is neat as well. Yeah. But yeah, I think the focus is on. I don't know. There's only so much of that that there is in this game. Yeah. You're, you're, oh, French army's moving over there. I'm going to go and find them. Well, they're going for leash. I, I'm going to try and get my guys together and do yeah. a fight. I mean, yeah. that's really what this game yep. is. Uh, so, But it, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. With it. Me too. So this is Napoleon Returns 1815 from Worthington. 
I I had a good time with this. Me it's, too. You know, it's it's a bit it's a bit longer than some of the other games that they've put out, which I thought were very very quick. Mm -hmm. This one's got a bit more a little bit more meat to it. Yeah. Whilst still, with some very light mechanics. Uh, yeah. Still S accessible ca yes. mechanics. Yes. So appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com, and I'm Grant.